Who doesn't love a haunted house? Made of cardboard and cobwebs, let us assemble this monstrosity together. And along the way, I'll show you all of its hidden secret. <laughs> Let's begin. So here is the first piece of the Mayhem Manor. As I said, this is entirely made of cardboard, so it's really light, really easy to move and set up. And this is the center section of the Mayhem Manor. It started out as pieces of project board. And on the inside, you can see here, this is one of those foam tombstones and then cut out the center. Now this hole in the middle here is for the fireplace. And what I did was I printed up a really cool image of a fireplace and I have a pumpkin light inside of it that makes it glow. It might be a little hard to read right now, but once it's dark on the inside, you can really see it flickering. This is a roll of paper that we got at the dollar store that looked like castle walls in this scale, which is incidentally about one quarter scale. A good example is Barbie is about 12 inches tall. This would be too big for her. So I chose to do it or like a 16 inch high figure or doll, like the Tonder dolls or Jean dolls, if any of you are familiar with those. So this is a plastic stick on backsplash tile that I also got at the dollar store. It's been painted black, then touched up with a little bit of gray. Here is the front entrance to the manor. Again, this was project boards. And you can see here that I used another styrofoam tombstone and cut out the center in order to make it the front doors. And these were part of some fencing from the Dollar Tree that I used some jump rings to make the door knockers. Let me turn it around for you and show you that the inside of this has paper on the floor that looks like distressed wood and on the front doors. This just fits right in front of this piece. My next piece is the very top room and the top of the room, which fits on top just like this. Again, another small tombstone that I cut out the center. I have a little picture in there, photograph that has that holographic image that changes as you move around. I also put the stone wallpaper there on the interior the same plastic siding. And to let you know, if you can see what looks like spider webs all over, it's marble spray paint that when it comes out, comes out in strings. And I'm really glad the way this has held up over the past year, because it still looks like spider webs in places, but it adds a lot of distressing. More cardboard that I fashioned to make the rooftop of the front entrance. And I want to call attention to the roof material that I've used here is corrugated trim that's used for bulletin boards in classrooms. This, of course, I painted gray and then touched up with some greens and some browns to make it look moldy or a little mossy, then more of the marbleized paint. This was a fence material that came with some of the tombstones. And I made this to sit right on top, just like that. So you can see the whole center section of our manor coming together. Now my little side section, side room right here, which is more like a green room. Uh, again, I used a, a small tombstone and cut out the center. I think those make really great stone window frames. Same technique, this was a cardboard box that I went ahead and changed the shape of the top. And this comes out so that I can open it up and put different things in there. But of course, I can reach it and put stuff in like that. It's not much of a problem. So this piece just sits right up against the side here like that. Some pipe cleaners are here and up here to get this big vine to be growing up the side. Here's another side room. And if you can see on the inside, it has a little bit of an altar. And you'll see why once I get the interior decorated. Again, the exact same technique all the way around. Also a cardboard box. 
And one little detail I want to call your attention to are the bricks that are around the edge. These are styrofoam bricks. And I painted them again in the same color world. You'll notice that there's a big hole, a round hole at the top, but there's still something here, and you'll see why in just a little bit. This is where everything really starts to grow. I wanted there to be a tall turret, and that's where I really got into trouble, because it made it way too tall to put it just about anywhere in the house. This is a concrete tube from the hardware store, so you can buy them in different diameters. I think this is an eight inch uh, tube. It's also covered in the same plastic material, painted the same way, the same distressing, so everything has continuity. This round piece here, which is actually the balcony to the top of the turret, is a separate piece. It has more of those bricks and some of that fencing that I've cut apart and connected with chain. And then I have more of the concrete tube that I was talking about. Again, I made a window out of a tombstone, covered the inside with the brick paper, and I've got a hanging skeleton in there because of course every turret should have one inspired by Disney's Haunted Mansion. And this is a separate piece that sits right on top on a little slot. The top of it, the separate piece as well, it makes it really easy to store all this stuff when it comes apart. And it's still pretty light, it's just a little risky. Oh, uh, what did I just say? It's a little risky. All right, let me take it up here. Woo! The hardest part is done. It's all the way up to where it just almost touches the ceiling. Now I'm adding some of the little fun elements, and this is more or less like part of the yard and everything growing up and around everything. Here's another little side piece, and it's some of that fencing from the dollar store that I cut and put around another piece of cardboard, and then did some fake grass and some dead-looking plants which I totally love, and then some long vines. And this goes on this side, and so I wind this around. This is what I decided to use for the lighting on the interior of the castle, because it's battery operated, they're on a timer, and they're easy to use. I found these candles at Pop Shelf last year, and once you turn them on, they operate on their own timer. They'll go on every night at the same time and go off every night at the same time. And they last all the way through the season. I love them because they're pillars and they can stand in the corner of the room and light up the whole room. I love the flickering of them. It was a really inexpensive way to make the lighting happen. These little folding tables are the next step in expanding the grounds because I really didn't have enough room to do everything I wanted to do. I made these little covers out of cardboard, painted them with browns and grays to resemble earth. This is where my wishing well will live. I have made a platform for it and I painted it in browns and grays again and added a lot of greenery. That's going to go approximately here and on the inside I'm adding a pumpkin light, again, that has several flashing effects. That's going to go down in this hole there. And on top of that is where my actual wishing well will go. And this I made out of cardboard into a round shape and covered in the same plastic stone material. Spray painted it, used those same foam bricks and some moss, and on the inside, I did a clear sheet of plastic, which resembles the top of the water, also with some gray around the edges and a few bubbles on the surface. And you'll notice all the skeletons on the inside. Poor guys, they've just been thrown into the well. And that fits right over my lighting effect. Pretty nicely. Now, of course, I have to add 
my bucket and the support for my roof. That just slots in just like that. We have our rope for the bucket and then I have my roof. Same thing. These pieces slide right in on the outside and hold my roof really secure. I also have somebody's leg in my hand that I may just leave on the edge there or give it to the lady of the manor. And now I'm going to put my seesaw skeletons that I got at Target last year. I really love these guys. Just to give you an idea. Just a nice lively touch. And you can do them without the sound, but they still have the motion sensor. I have a little more landscaping here that I'm going to go ahead and add. And I can put this pretty much anywhere I want to put it. And these are pieces of styrofoam that I have spray painted and then added the little greenery to. Makes it pretty fun. And just a really quick tip, spray paint will eat styrofoam. And in most cases, you don't want to use it to paint styrofoam. But in this case, it eats through the foam enough that it makes them look like really cool rock formations. I put a few more over here on this side just tucking that in against the castle there. A few more rocks here, and one in the back. Another special little piece. This is a knocking coffin someone's trying to get out. I love these things. I'm putting it here in what I'm calling the crypt room. Now my last two pieces are these cute little cat gargoyles. I love cats. And they have a spot right up here made just for them. One on each side. The castle is guarded and it's ready to go. The next piece is the backyard. And this is the pond that goes in the back, which is part of the cemetery grounds or the Mayhem Manor. And you'll notice that everything at the back is painted black so that it is masked. We have our own black cat here helping. She inspects everything. I love this thing. It's a little boat made out of a coffin. And you'll see, it's so fun. It actually follows the line of the pond and will just keep going round and round and round. The only bad thing is you can't run it without sound. I think I'll turn it off. So the last thing is bringing out the characters that inhabit Mayhem Manor.
Thanks for watching. Happy Halloween.